Good morning. Happy Thursday, guys. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Back on my back porch this morning. Kind of like being out here um, in the mornings. But anyway, good morning. Happy Thursday. Got my water this morning. Well, I've already had some coffee, not going to lie. Disclaimer there. I had some coffee, but I'm just done with my coffee. So, I like to have water the rest of the day. So, here I am with my water. All right, hey, 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 guys. All right, so still in this um, book, Seeing Beautiful Again by Lisa Tukerst, and today's devotion is called, Why Isn't God Answering My Prayer? Oh my goodness, why isn't God answering my prayer? How many times have we um, thought that or said that, wondered that, right? Um, and the key verse is Romans 8, 28, and it says, We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. And that's the ESV version, because I know, well, for myself, I've heard that in a different version so, so long, it's weird to say it that way. But anyways, um, we know that all things work together for, for good, right? To those that, are, um, that God loves or are called according to His purpose. So, um, if you're watching me live, give me hashtag one. If you're watching the replay, give me hashtag two. And we're going to get going here, okay? All right, so she says in, two, in 2015, the New York Times ran an article called Googling for God. In this article, author Seth Stevens Davidowitz started by saying, it has been a bad decade for God, at least so far. He went on to ask, what questions do people have when they're questioning God? The number one question was, who created God? The number two question was, why does God allow suffering? But it was the third question that slammed into my heart and made me realize the depth at which many of us struggle when we walk through devastating situations. Why does God hate me? I'm not alone in wondering about God's feelings when circumstances beg me to feel betrayed. While I would have never used the word hate, seeing it typed out as one of the most commonly asked questions about God shows me just how dark our perspective can get. The most devastating spiritual crisis isn't when we wonder why God isn't doing something. It's when we become utterly convinced that he no longer cares. And that's what I hear hiding behind that Google search. And I shudder to say this, but I think that's what was hiding behind my own disillusionment as well. What makes faith fall apart isn't doubt. Listen to this, it's so good. It's becoming too certain of the wrong things, of the wrong things. Things like forgiveness doesn't matter. It's not worth it. It's not time for that kind of obedience. God isn't moving. What I see is absolute proof that God isn't working. That's where I can find myself getting more and more skeptical of God's love, God's provision, God's protection, God's instructions, and God's faithfulness. And most of all, where I start fearing He really has no plan at all. And I'm just truly going to be a victim of circumstances beyond anyone's control. The problem with that thinking is, while it may line up with what my life looks like from my place of pain and confusion, it doesn't line up with the truth. And before everything went haywire in my life, I had already put a stake in the ground proclaiming that God's word is where I would turn and return to no matter what. I could resist trusting God and turning to his truth. I could run from it. I could, with bitter resignation, put my Bible on a shelf to collect dust for years. But I wouldn't be able to escape what was already buried deep in my heart. Mm. I knew in this deep down knowing place that what I was seeing wasn't all that was happening. Do you hear what she's saying? She knew that wasn't all that was happening. Even though what she was seeing, she knew that wasn't all that was happening. Past experiences where I've seen God's faithfulness remind me that I don't always see God working in the midst of my hard times. She already knew this, right? 
There are a few times in my life where I've seen dramatic moves by God happen quick enough for me to say, wow, look what God is doing, right? Sometimes we can just see it like that, right? But most of the time, it's the thousands of little shifts, so slight that the dailiness of his work doesn't register in real time. It's hard when we are living in that space where our head knows God can do anything, but our heart is heavy because he's not doing what we are hoping for, what we've prayed for, what we've believed for, for a long time, for a long while. I get it, and I've cried many tears because of it. So what helps? It helps to know these things. Listen up. God is active, even if we can't see his activity. He's active. Just because we can't discern or detect what he's doing doesn't mean he isn't working, right? We think we have to be able to see it. We got to be able to detect it or discern it. We, got, we think we have to know in order for him to be working, but that's not true. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, We fix our eyes on not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. It's eternal. The next thing, what may feel like a lack of intervention is not a sign of his lack of affection. <sighs> Man, she's giving us some good things here. What may feel like a lack of intervention is not a sign of his lack of affection. Lamentations 3, 21 and tw through 23 says, This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness love that scripture, right? The third thing is, God loves us too much to answer our prayers at any other time than the right time and in any other way than the right way. Guys, he's not going to, he's perfect. God does all things perfectly and in the right time and he's not going to change. He can't. He can't be anything else but truth and, and lie and being perfect and right where it needs to be. So we have to trust him, right? Romans 8, 28, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. So she says, today look for beautiful ways God is showing you assurances of his love. His deep affection is all around you, friend. Even in the waiting places, even in the uncertainty, even when you don't, you just don't get it. His love is there for you and he is working things. He is moving and he is doing things even when you can't see it and when you don't detect it and you don't know it and things aren't going the way you think they should go. You have to trust that he has everything in his hands and he is working all things out for his good, right? And for our good, right? And she prays, God, I confess it's easy for me to become skeptical when things are not working out the way I had planned. Even when I don't see it, even when I don't feel it, I will stand on the truth that you are working all things together for good. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's the devotion for today, guys. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Trust God. Put your trust right back there with him. Don't get consumed by the, by the craziness and the things, man, the situations that you might find yourself in. Just keep looking to him. Keep your eyes fixed on God. Keep trusting in him in, every, in everything, in all things, guys. Keep trusting him. Um, mom, my mom should be here doing EMJ Daily in the morning. So hop on there and show her some support, some love. And um, I know it's going to be good. So y'all have a wonderful Friday tomorrow and a wonderful weekend. And um, so mom will be here tomorrow and I will see y'all Monday on the EMJ Daily. Bye guys.